chemistry. And so first off, really, why do we even care about sulfur? And so particularly, sulfur compounds are found throughout Earth's atmosphere. Um, and down in the lower troposphere, they mostly get rained out um, through because they're particularly good at being dissolved in the rain. Um, but up in the upper stratosphere, we see this increase in SO2. And this is really important because these are a major source of aerosol, particularly up in the stratosphere. And so what happens is that sulfur um, gets oxidized to form sulfuric acid, which then can then seed aerosol. And that aerosol does a particularly great job of scattering light. And so it becomes really important when we're looking at climates and trying to understand um, different processes that are driving uh, the temperature on a planet. And so traditionally, the idea with SO2 chemistry is that SO2 reacts with OH to make this HSO3. And that HSO3 immediately finds itself running into oxygen to make HO2 plus SO3. And then that SO3 through a water catalyzed reaction will form sulfuric acid and ultimately leads to these aerosol particles, which are these small liquid or solid suspended particles in the atmosphere. And so I guess really the question is, what's the problem? And the problem is sulfur compounds have been observed throughout our solar system, not just on Earth. In particularly, they're on Venus, where we have these sulfuric acid clouds from 50 to 70 kilometers through the um, atmosphere. But once you get above those clouds, um, starting at about 90 kilometers, there's this massive increase in SO2 concentration. And these increases in SO2 really exceed any model predictions by orders of magnitude, two or three orders of magnitude. And so what this really is suggesting is that there's some sort of chemical source of SO2 in the middle atmosphere of Venus that we don't know about. And interestingly enough, this area has very similar conditions to Earth's stratosphere and mesosphere. So similar temperatures, pressures, and water content is specifically what I'm talking about. And so initially, uh, one suggested fix for this is some work that was done in the VITA group about um, 15 years ago, um, specifically looking at IR overtone stretches, or overtone OH stretches, and that through this overtone, you could put enough energy in to drive the photolysis of sulfuric acid to form uh, water in SO3, and that SO3 can rapidly photolyze um, under standard UV conditions. Um, and so the idea behind this is that you put in your IR photon, you get this OH stretch going, and that hydrogen starts hopping around the molecule, jumping from oxygen to oxygen. And eventually it finds its way to the other oxygen that has a hydrogen, and we get out water plus SO3. And this is a very fast process, so high up in the atmosphere in these lower pressures, um, it can actually outcompete the um, collisional deactivation. And so a lot of work was done to actually go and measure these overtone stretches, these going from V equals 0 to 4 and 5 transitions. Um, and so you can see these happen in the red, so in the visible. Um, this is particularly important because UV photons required for photolysis of sulfuric acid simply aren't available in the atmosphere. They're filtered out um, via other absorption processes higher up in the atmosphere. Um, in Venus, it's the CO2 doing it. Um, and then, interestingly enough, these transitions do provide enough energy to get over this barrier, um, about 40 kcal per mole, to then go to this SO3 plus water. And this does a really great job of explaining the SO2 vertical profile on Earth. Unfortunately, it's still not good enough for Venus. So even when this is included in the Venus models, we are um, still an order or two, an order of magnitude or two below the SO2 concentrations that are observed. And so our thought was, are there any other reservoirs for SO2, anything else that could be hiding SO2? And so what we are interested in is looking at sulfurous acid, this H2SO3. And the idea is that um, through water, a water catalyzed reaction, this could go to SO2 plus water. Um, and unlike sulfuric acid, sulfurous acid is energetically 
the unfavored product. It's um, actually downhill to go to SO2 plus water. And so it's actually really hard to observe this in the gas phase and actually hasn't ever been observed in the gas phase before. And so you can see if you start with a sulfurous acid, it's downhill to these products, but you do have to go through this barrier. So it's possible that with this higher barrier that there could be this SO2 or this H2SO3 um, product hiding in the atmosphere. You might have a big picture. picture nope. OK. <laughs> so um, what's interesting is we want to know how do you get sulfurous acid, and how do you get up that hill to make that? And so interestingly enough, SO2 has this strong absorption from 250 to 310 10 nanometers in the atmosphere um, that's not filtered out in our atmosphere or in Venus's. And so the idea is that you can excite from the ground state into this singlet excited state, and then you internally convert, you walk your way down, and you find eventually you can get this internal conversion to a triplet state. And so the direct um, process that goes here is forbidden, but you can, um, SO2 does make its way here. Um, it's known to react with organics to make sulfates. And so the idea is that it can react with water to make H2SO3. And so um, we decided to do some experiments trying to actually make the sulfurous acid. And so here I show that uh, transition. And what we use is a filter to cut out um, anything below about 300 nanometers, um, specifically to avoid exciting this deeper um, UV absorption, which can actually lead to photolysis of SO2 and drive other chemistry that we aren't um, interested in right now. And so what we used is we had this um, simple glass cell with quartz windows, and we used uh, this filter to cut out the higher energy UV light, but let through all of um, this UVA light, really. And then we used a uh, green laser to monitor the aerosol content in our cell. And so interestingly enough, when we turn on the light, we immediately start generating aerosol. It's not a secret that there's something going on. It's not something you can't see. You can visibly see this aerosol formation. And so looking at the controls, uh, we wanted to make sure that this wasn't something that just shows up all the time. And so if you start with just water, um, we don't really see any changes. Um, or if we just use SO2, we don't see anything going on. But whenever we use a mixture of the two, we immediately see this aerosol formation, this decrease. Um, and so we're looking at this laser going through. And you can immediately actually see the laser going through. You can watch the particles move through it. And so this is really exciting. This is really some new results coming out of our group. But what we think we're doing is actually making this SO2, or this H2SO3. And so I'd like to acknowledge the other members of the VITA group who've helped me with some of this work, um, particularly uh, Katie Plath, who's now a professor at CU, as well as Jamie Donaldson, um, who is collaborating doing a lot of the work on the theory end of this, looking at the triplet state uh, reactions of SO2, um, as well as our funding. And thank you guys for your time. Do we have any questions for Jay? All right, in that case, I will use my prerogative to ask a question of my own. Um, so how would you go about uh, confirming that it is H2SO3? Um, one of the things we want to do is maybe uh, use a mass spectrometer, um, as well as I'm working, and we just got our cavity ring down experiment up and going. Um, so I could actually use the, this red cavity ring down to look at the OH stretches and actually confirm that I'm not making sulfuric acid, um, because it is possible that there are other rats that would take us to sulfuric acid. Um, we've been careful to try and remove all OH, so we pump the cell out overnight to remove everything. Unfortunately, if we try and put an OH scavenger in the cell, it turns out that the triplet state SO2 really likes to react with that OH scavenger um, and generates even more impressive clouds. Um, so that's actually something that we'll be looking into next as well. Thank you. Any other questions? Everyone looks like they're about to applaud. <laughs> but we got one in the back.
maybe I missed this, but uh, do you know what the reaction efficiency or what percent of sulfur gets transferred, converted to the HSO3? The, the H2SO3? Yeah. We don't yet. So that's the next thing that I'm really working on is actually getting the kinetics down for these sorts of reactions mm -hmm. so that we can actually feed these back into the models and see what's going on there. Okay. And I just another quick question. Maybe you haven't thought about this, but do you know if the sulfur uh, isotope fractionation would be mass dependent during this process? Um, so that's the other exciting thing is we suspect that it will be mm -hmm. um, because that internal conversion is dependent on the masses um, and that internal conversion is related to those vibrations. And so that's another thing, especially with that OH scavenger that we use, we want to look at potential uh, mass independent fractionation with the organics there. All right, let's thank Jay again.